are live with another DACWA forum presented by the Here and Now Project. Super excited to see so many people with us. And, uh, you know, we've got a really cool topic that has been uh, on the forefronts of uh, a lot of our members' minds over the last probably two or three years. Seems like every time we would have a meetup, the, the number one question that we would have is uh, wheelchair maintenance. And that's why we are just super excited to have uh, kind of a, a whole setup today with uh, uh, a few of our members and uh, one of our major sponsors, National Seating and Mobility, who has been a huge support to the Here and Now Project over the last few years. And uh, yeah, so I just want to welcome everybody and I'm going to hand it off to Elaine Stefanowitz, who's going to be doing a bit of the MC work and then we can get right into this thing. So go for it. All right. Good evening, everyone. Wave at me if you've got your cameras on. So thank you for, for being here tonight. Great to see you guys. And um, we really appreciate you coming to our forums. So I know you guys are busy. And it's evening. And so hopefully this is a good time after dinner to come together. And um, yeah, hopefully people aren't stressing still about the election like I am <laughs> chewing off all my nails. Uh, but tonight, uh, as Kenny said, we're gonna be talking about wheelchair maintenance. So um, let's see, National Seating Mobility, like you said, will be our, our um, spotlighted sponsor. And um, Marty Whitman, which many of you guys know, I've known him since 1982, which is crazy. Um, he was just a kid, yeah. a whole couple years younger than me. Um, yeah, he'll be doing a demonstration. Um, he's over in the, the uh, showroom there, the repair room um, of National City and Mobility with Shannon and Joe. And, and um, so they will be uh, doing some live demos for you on wheelchair maintenance. And I'm also going to be putting in the chat a link from UW Rehab that is a great PDF um, handout about wheelchair maintenance. So um, as soon as we get going, I will post that for you guys. And let's see. So we're going to um, start out with National Seating Mobility and any questions. Uh, they're the spotlight. And then uh, Marty Shannon uh, will um, focus on the actual wheelchair maintenance. Marty will focus on manual wheelchairs and Shannon on motorized wheelchair. And there will be an open discussion, include time for questions and answers. And then um, around 745, we're going to have um, some giveaways from uh, the here and now. So get ready for that. And then we'll wrap up around 7.55 to 8. So uh, without further ado, I will go ahead and, and turn it over to National Seating and Mobility. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks, Kenny. So, yep, we are here in our Mount Lake Terrace uh, repair shop. Uh, we've got Mr. Marty Whitman right here and Shannon Fouts, our rehab seating tech. Um, we are going to do a presentation tonight, like Elaine said, on wheelchair maintenance, and we're going to divide and conquer. Marty is going to cover a lot of the, the uh, custom manual service and maintenance aspects that we'll be talking about tonight, and then Shannon will cover some power chair tips and tricks uh, that will hopefully be a benefit to uh, each of you in attendance tonight. First of all, I've got some exciting news to share. So I'm going to share my screen. Did you guys have anything you wanted to add? No, we'll come back after you're done. Okay. All right. All right. So I am going to share my screen here and give you uh, the latest uh, press release hot off the press from the, the NSM uh, world. We have just acquired a company that some of you may or may not be aware of. It is an organization called American Seating and Mobility. Um, I, I kind of have to chuckle that our names are so similar. It just made sense that we should be part of the same company. It's kind of like the, the American League and the National League and Major League Baseball. Um, but anyway, so American Seating and Mobility has joined our family and everybody see that okay? I know I've got a pop-up here. I'm gonna move that over a little bit. 
And so American Seating joined us just recently, which basically gave us actually eight additional locations. That says five, but they've got some what I would consider satellite locations. And um, so technically we've got eight new locations that cover all of Western Washington. I mean, we've got the I-5 corridor pretty well blanketed between Mount Vernon all the way down to Vancouver, Washington. And then we pick up again over the border in uh, Oregon. And likewise, traveling east, we've got locations out to Post Falls, Helena, Montana, Billings, Montana, uh, Kennewick, Tri-Cities area. So yeah, we've just uh, overnight, we've darn near doubled our footprint with this acquisition and we're excited. Um, they've got a, a lot of strong ATPs, funding folks and um, schedulers, techs. So they bring a lot of resource and value as well. Um, this is definitely not a one-sided transaction where we're both excited to be a part of the same team now and, and be able to bring a, just a, another level of service to everybody out there in the community. Um, I'll just give you a snapshot here of what the map looks like today. And the last time we met at the Here and Now annual meetup, I showed you the map. And the only thing on the map at that time were these little NSM icons. So we had these four locations in Washington, and now we've added five more in the state, not including the other locations outside of Washington that I mentioned. So we picked up another location down in Olympia. So two locations, if you include Lacey there, down in that neck of the woods. Pacific, if everybody knows where Pacific is, it's kind of over there between Auburn and Sumner. Um, Federal Way, the location that Marty and Shannon and I are at today is here in Mount Lake Terrace. Up in Mount Vernon, we have Trish up there and she's a 30 year ATP. She's got two techs up there, a beautiful facility. I'll be up there again tomorrow. So if you, if you live up in that North End, um, feel free to join her or, or meet her up there at that facility. And she and her techs up there can take care of anything you need. And then we've got the location over in Post Falls, Idaho, which is servicing Spokane and down to Lewiston and uh, all points in between. And, and then of course, Kennewick Tri-Cities. Now we've just added that location that, that came over with the ASM merger. So lots of new exciting places that we can bring our services to the public um, and what that does on a national level because it for those of you that don't know American Seating was part of a, a larger company called Travis which was based out of Texas so that really on a national scope it puts national seating at 200 plus locations including Alaska Hawaii and Canada we should probably change our name to international seating mobility um, but anyway it just it gives us a really broad footprint when you look at the map here, really the Dakotas are the only ones missing from this picture at this point in Wyoming, but we do serve Wyoming out of Montana. We have over 500 ATPs and 1600 support staff at this point. Uh, between all our ATPs, we have on average, just in the Washington state area, we have over 20 years of experience between our ATP group. Um, so there's a lot of wealth and wealth of knowledge in the assistive technology practice. Uh, we source more than 250 suppliers. NSM is a um, an equal opportunity purchaser of a product. So unlike a formulary driven model, we we use whatever product is suited for the client. And um, you know, in fact, I was just working on Melissa Espinosa's colors wheelchair, which you know I think in in some in some circles maybe wouldn't be considered a preferred pick. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think Melissa would argue that it's a great looking chair. It's a, it's a great product. It's, it's maybe just not the most popular or common product out there that a lot of people are familiar with, but that's the chair that, that works for Melissa. She's used a colors product for several years. It works well in her environment. It works well for her personally. And we don't, we don't force our, our ATPs to use a specific product. We're gonna use whatever, um, like I said, best suits the client. Now, with that said, we do have a remote evaluation component that I mentioned this at the Here and Now annual meetup, but the remote evaluation, I can't stress enough how, how impactful this is from a service standpoint. 
our industry historically has not been well known for the level of service that we provide. And, and I say that again, as a blanket statement about the industry, not anyone in specific, I'm just saying that from um, a service standpoint, you know, we can do much better. We can, we can definitely, we, we need to raise the bar. And so what we're trying to do at NSM is we're trying to reduce the number of trips that it takes to diagnostic, uh, to diagnose an issue and then to fix it. And so with remote evaluation, we're hoping that in the future, we'll see more of this happening. This past year, it's led us to 1,000 fewer trips to client homes. So if we can identify the problem remotely before we even get in a van and come to your house, especially during the, the COVID situation, I, I'm sure that we all agree, the fewer times we have people in our homes, I, I think the safer of an environment um, we've created for ourselves. So we have a thousand fewer trips this past year from the remote evaluation tool that we're using called Rescue Lens. And that ultimately has um, led to 24,000 miles um, fewer miles driven, which is the equivalent of a trip around the world that NSM has just saved. So, you know, our green footprint just got smaller too. Um, we have a portal for both the therapists and for the clients to be able to access their order status. So um, unlike, again, historically as an industry, when you were uh, either ordering a new piece of equipment or in need of service, there, you would make a phone call to find out what's going on. Sometimes you got the answer right then and there over the phone if you were talking to the, the person that had access to your file. If not, sometimes it might've been a day or two before you heard back and then, you know, who knows before you actually saw somebody at your home or, or, uh, or at the clinic. So basically with the mynsmorder.com, you can access your order status on your smart device. You don't need to try and reach somebody live at the branch. You don't need to wait for a phone call back or an email communication. You can access your order in real time on the app and find out where it's at in the process. And it'll tell you from evaluation to delivery exactly what's happening with your order. Um, just kind of last little couple of comments here. We are here to serve safely. And this is, uh, this is an initiative within the organization. This isn't just a, a, a catchy little tagline. This is a company initiative and there's a lot behind this. This, this slide I think oversimplifies everything that went into this serving safely um, tagline. It's, you know, we, we actually offer PPEs to clients if they're coming into our branch and they don't have the proper protective equipment, we will we have that available to them. Um, likewise, if we're coming out to your house, we are wearing masks. Um, we will meet you know meet you outside. Like for example, Melissa, when I went to pick up her chair yesterday, you know I, I picked it up outside. Um, there's no need for us to come into your home. Um, we can we can actually perform a lot of. Um, now we're moving into the winter months, but we were doing evaluations actually in parking lots and in areas outside too. Our goal here is to still be able to provide the service that's needed um, in a safe way. Obviously, we, we've got to be able to maintain um, people's equipment and we have also got to be able to safely and effectively perform those evaluations. And so that's part of the serving safety program. And then just to kind of give you some contact information for these branches. So here in the branch that we're in tonight, the Mount Lake Terrace branch, um, Dave Hadfield, Neil Jackson, and Doug Bakken, they are ATPs out of this branch. Shannon is one of the rehab seating techs again. Um, and then over to the right there, you'll see the contact number for that branch. In Federal Way, Doug Eknes is our ATP. These are names some of you might be familiar with. These I'm, I'm talking about people that have been around a long time. Wendell knows Neil. Neil used to work for Wendell years ago. And um, these, Scott, yeah. So we've got um, we've got a lot of experience on this on this list right here. But Doug Eknes, he's at the Federal Way location. Dan Stewart down in Lacey. Um, he actually started working at Providence when Providence had their own DME um, department. And Dan, that's how he got started in the industry years ago. Aberdeen, they, uh, that was part of the Aero Medical Group that joined us back in March. 
and uh, Bruce Thompson and Brian Crowley work out of that location serving that um, that South South Sound. I don't know what you call that down there south of Olympia, but um, so those are your contacts. Uh, I did have some names here, for the ASM support team. I need to get some updated phone numbers for you folks for these uh, for these ATPs, but Mount Vernon, Trish Couch is the ATP up there in the branch manager. Pacific, um, there's actually two ATPs and one RTS out of Pacific, but I'm, I'm, li I'm literally just giving you kind of management or leaders, branch leadership information here. If you need to contact them, they'll be able to direct you to the appropriate ATP. Gary Martin's down in Olympia. Cole Walking Eagle, that's gotta be one of the coolest names I ever heard. <laughs> Thinking about getting my name changed to Cole Walking Eagle. Um, he's an ATP out in Kennewick. And then uh, out in Post Falls, Andy Jeske is the CEO of uh, Mercy and Mobility. So that is all I had. Is there, do I need to, Elaine, do I need to check for questions or I do? Okay. Um, yeah, we did, we did have a few questions. Okay. Um, and plus, and you also have a fan club, it looks like. So lots of people love uh, American Seating Mobility. Or Nash, did I just say American? You said American before. Now I have American in my head. Yeah, we're one in the same now, so yeah, that's okay. okay. Jeez. I swear I've got brain mush going on right now. So um, it, Marcia asks, does that mean NSM can now fix my wheelchair here and bill my insurance? New York State Insurance Fund, workers comp. Um, I will, there are, we have noticed in the initial um, integration and onboarding between American and national seating, there are a couple of, and I'm talking like literally less than, than four or five payers that are different between our organizations. So I will need to check on that New York. We do work with workers, <clears throat> excuse me. We work with workers comp all day long, but that specific policy under the, you said it was the New York fund. New, New York state insurance fund. Okay. I'll need to, um, I'll need to check on that. How do I get an answer back to Marsha? Marsha, do you want to leave your um, email or cell phone? Do you want to um, send it to me through the chat? You can do it privately if you'd like. And if that's okay, I can share it with, with Joe. <clears throat> Did you hear that, Joe? Sorry, I didn't. No, no problem. I just asked um, Marsha to, to, to put in chat privately and then I'll share it with you if that's okay. Yep, that sounds good. Okay, uh, Christina would like to know, what does remote evaluation look like? So it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's almost like FaceTime, right? We're gonna, you're gonna have your smart device, AKA your, your iPhone or your Android, and um, there's an app. So we would, we could do it via the app or Shan, you use FaceTime, right? Okay, so Shannon will, um, you know, the initial interaction between the client and our, our seating tech, Shannon, if the app is uh, presenting a challenge to navigate, it's, I haven't personally used it, it sounds like Shannon has, and they're, they're, it's not as user-friendly maybe as FaceTime, we can use either one. So we just basically need a video connection for us to be able to look at whatever the issue is. If it's a power chair and there's a fault log or an error code that's showing up, and, and the client can hold their phone over their display screen. That just gives us an ability to be able to um, identify what that code is. If it's a manual chair and you've got, um, like an example would be a caster that's maybe not making contact, maybe they could hold the phone in a position to where we could see if the, the frame is bent or there's something going on with the fork, maybe there's a missing washer or, you know, there's just a variety of issues, but. It just gives us a video connection to be able to lay eyes on the situation and try and identify what the problem might be. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and Meg wants to know how many wheelchair using employees does NSM employ? Uh, let me think about that. I, I'm only responsible for about 10 states and we're all over the country. 
I would, okay. I'm, I'm really familiar with my region and we've got one in my region, but nationally, I would say we've probably got about 10 to 12. That's great. You walk the talk, we like that. Um, and Christina wants to know, Christina with a K, do you work with United Healthcare Medicaid? I do my rehab at Virginia Mason. Yep, we do. Okay, great. All right, and let's see. Yeah, I I guess. Um, let's see. Uh, Christina with a K said she's um, she can't. He, I do not hear. So if someone could put an answer in chat. So, uh, Rob, I don't know if you can work with Christina about that. And Ian is here. Hey, Ian. He wants to know what is the current timeline between the initial wheelchair evaluation and delivery of a power chair? That is an awesome question, Ian. I'm glad somebody asked that because we are, we're actually in the middle of bringing two processes together between American seating and national seating. I would say the average in the mountain region, the, 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 air, the area that I cover, is sitting around 70, 72 to 75 days right now. Um, American seating and mobility, their process was a little bit quicker than ours. You know, just in full disclosure, they were actually getting chairs out within like six weeks. So we are working in the integration process. We are working towards understanding what the contributing factors to that were and we're finding some some things in their process that they did um, more efficiently than we do and we also found that their software that they're using to process the orders was uh, much more intuitive so we are working behind the scenes at a corporate level to try and adopt some of those practices including bringing over some of their software be able to use with um, in conjunction with our existing software, but also just we want to try and let them do what they do really well instead of saying, okay, now you guys are part of NSM. This is the way you're going to do it. We want to learn from them as well. So we're hoping that 72 average day time frame on our E to D time, we're hoping to get that down as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Becky wants to know, how quick can you get a manual chair out? You know, it just depends. I mean, again, it's it's just an average, which we all know about averages. It can change greatly yeah. depending on the insurance company. How fast does your doctor respond when we need a face-to-face? -face? Um, you know, so it just depends. The, the, the clinical documentation piece seems to be the big time suck out of the whole process. Um, but yeah, it's it's sitting right in that 72 day range. All right, thank you. Um, I'm finding out, Kenny, that one of our members is needing captioning. So um, that is definitely something we're going to add um, for our future forums. And I really appreciate her letting, letting us know. Um, and I apologize for that. I think um, Zoom does, no, that's Teams. I think it's Teams that does real-time captioning. So, uh, but we will uh, see if we can hire someone for CART, which is like live transcription too. So we'll talk about this um, definitely in the future. And let's see, Christina with a C says, my power chair arrived in six weeks. So, yeah, nice. I know. Gosh, you guys, like I said, you got a fan club going on here. I, I was so. I was just going to say before I celebrate, did she get it from us? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, that's probably that's a good question. question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and Debbie, who works at Good Sam Rehab, she's amazing. She says, if you get a chair through one vendor, do you have to stay with that vendor for repairs or adjustment, or can you work with another vendor? 
Um, are you talking just within the net, the national seating American seating circle or just in general, like if you get a chair from new motion, can you come to NSM for service or vice versa? Uh, Debbie, hopefully you can hear me and you can uh, answer that question. Oh, in general, she said. Please wear that. Um, I, I, I believe the answer is you can go to another company as long as you don't have an open order with the company that you're with at the time. So if you have like a, a work order going, you cannot submit to insurance from another company, but I believe you can go to another company. You have to have, excuse me here, um, question kind of along with that, the details. Do you have to have documentation on hand that shows that they qualify for that chair in order for you to work on it? Please. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. You have to have prescription, documentation, all that kind of stuff. If if the insurance on file didn't pay for the chair, though, right? They we have to be able to demonstrate that they qualify for the chair yeah. if yeah. another insurance or payer paid for it. Correct. Yeah. So with that being okay. said, I really recommend that everybody has um, everybody who gets a chair also request the all the documentation that was um, uh, gathered to approve them or qualify for them for the chair. So that you don't have, so that NSM doesn't have to go to New Motion and get that information. If you have it on hand, that that really is helpful. Do you guys uh, work with a physical therapist to evaluate? This is my Elaine. My own question. Okay, great. Because yes. yep. I did have my doctor add that into the prescription for an evaluation. Yes. I didn't know if that was necessary, but I thought, what the heck. Yeah. So okay. Well, thank you so much. And we will still accept, um, Debbie says thank you. Um, we're going to um, uh, still accept questions, but we are gonna move on now and um, get a demonstration from Marty and Shannon. So if you, again, if you have more questions, I will be monitoring chat. And then when we're, uh, we'll have an open discussion toward the end. So uh, keep the questions coming. All right, take it away, Marty and Shannon. Okay, so I'm I'm Marty, Shannon. I'm Shannon. Yep. And so I'm um, I'll just uh, introduce us really quick and give you a kind of a little saying that I like to operate from that I think is helpful. Uh, right here, Joe, if you could focus in on the top portion of this uh, easel. It says I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. And we give Confucius credit for that. So you see, there's a couple arrow, arrows. The ones that we focus on, that I like to focus on, is remember and understand. We're going to do a lot of. Hopefully, you'll be seeing a lot of seeing today or uh, watching this evening. And so, hopefully, you remember. And when we're all done, maybe you'll have the opportunity to do whatever you want to do to your chair, and then you'll really understand it. So that's um, that's where we're at, and I'm going to hand it over to Shannon. He's going to start out with power, and then we'll come back to me, and I will do some manual. All right. So the first thing I kind of want to talk about is is uh, battery maintenance, um, charging your chair, the importance of charging your chair every night of use. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, I, I charge it for a couple hours. What's that do to the battery and everything? Um, one of the things that you need to know when you're charging your chair, you need to get what's called a full load to go into the battery. So if you just charge it for a couple of hours, you're getting what's called a surface charge. Surface charge can actually destroy your battery pretty fast. So the most important thing is, is to get at least eight to 10 hours a night charging your battery. Um, and that gives it a full load, a, a full cycle, basically. And definitely helps out with your battery life over the, the years and everything. Um, I guess if if you have if you're out and you have an emergency, charging it for a couple hours is it's okay. Of course, you got to get from one place to the other. 
So if you have your charger on you, you have to plug in. That's okay. Oh, I'm not hearing anything. Can you can you guys hear us? Uh, now I can hear you. What did were you able to hear Shannon up till now? Yeah, it looked sounded like it cut it out cut out. I hope maybe it just was mine. Okay. Everything's good. Everything's good. Okay. <laughs> I hope everybody heard all that. Um, where was I? Uh, so as far as insurance and everything, insurance will pay for a set of batteries every year. So if you're a heavy user, you might need to use that every year when, when the time comes. Um, if you take good care of your uh, battery and, uh, and charge it every night like you're supposed to, and you're not a real heavy user, you can probably get a couple of years out of them. I know a lot of people that have. So that being said, um, when you first get your chair, take notice as to how your battery drops as you're driving through the day and, and everything. And know that when you're starting to hit that year mark or, or whenever around there, know to notice if it's dropping a lot faster and you feel like you're uncomfortable with getting through your day, and then just give us a call and we should be able to replace your battery in that year time. Um, then, uh, so that's kind of that on batteries. Um, if anybody, should I ask for questions right now? If they have any questions <coughs> on battery maintenance? Hey, Elaine, are we going to, do you want us to take questions as we go with each topic or wait till the end? I think we're going to uh, wait to the end and I'm monitoring the, the chat too. If people want to put questions in the chat. Uh, we can, uh, otherwise, I think we'll kind of go, you know, it, it will go long if we take questions as we go. So okay. but people are writing things in the chat. And so I will make sure you guys um, hear everything. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing I have um, is tire, tire maintenance. Um, most power chairs, they're all solid tires. Some people do choose to have pneumatic tires. Um, if you do choose to have pneumatic tires, just uh, at the end of my list here is, is a tool kit. Just make sure you have inner tubes or a patch kit or some slime and everything. Um, one of the most important things when it comes to uh, your tires and everything is just pay attention to your tread life. Your tires and your casters, just make sure that, that they have good tread on them and everything. And when they start getting worn, you just give us a call and we can we can get a work order going and everything. Um, and uh, as far as casters, the rule goes with power chairs the same as manual chairs, pay attention to the hair that builds up in between the casters and the bearings. Yeah, I know on these chairs, they have a lot of covers that try and prevent dirt and water and, and hair in them, but they still find a way in there. Um, if, if you need to, if you wanna do the advocate for yourself and you have somebody handy enough to, to do it, you can, um, do things like I have a handy little jack right here that you can slide underneath the chair. And you telescope this rod. And if it's far enough under the chair, you can lift it. And then you can get to these bolts right here and kind of pull them out and then pull the hair out and everything. So you've got a bolt that goes through and then a nut on the back side. I believe it's a half inch on both sides. So if you have anyone that wants to keep on up on maintenance like that, that's, that's kind of how you do it. If you do not want to spend the money on a jack like this, I use a wood block. 
What is that? What, where do you get the jack and what does it cost? So this jack right here, and I honestly have no idea what the cost is. I've never really looked into it. The company bought these for all the technicians. Oh, okay. So all right. I, I love it for for those who kind of want to advocate for themselves on keeping their hair clear of hair and all that stuff. Um, if you want to spend money on a jack, wooden block and some muscles, you just kind of tip the chair on its side, shove a block underneath, you kind of get it up so that you can work on it a little. <clears throat> but otherwise, I mean, if you're not comfortable with doing any, any of that stuff, you can give us a phone call and maybe come to the branch or we can come out and do a little bit of maintenance and stuff too. So, <clears throat> but one of the key things that I think Marty and I are gonna get to is just advocating for yourself the best you can through, through the process of having your chair because you're the best person for it. So, um, here's my list here. Check for hair buildup. Um, keeping your chair clean. The importance of keeping your chair clean, I mean, one, aesthetics, but two, dirt and grind buildup in areas like your motors and and your casters and stuff. If you have a lot of dirt down in the areas of where your bearings and, and tight spots are, rust and water will kind of sit there, build up and things will start to rust pretty good. So that being said, um, when you're cleaning the chair, always be cautious of your joystick, wrap it with some plastic or something or um, just be careful, use a damp rag. So one of the things, basically any electronics, right? Yeah, you any wanna, electronics. It's a computer. So number one rule, don't use a hose. <laughs> um, Have we had that happen before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that happened quite a bit, you'd be surprised. Um, so rule number one, don't use a hose. Uh, two, damp rag or um, if you have a spray bottle, it's okay to use a spray bottle. Just kind of hit like the joystick and everything real quick. Don't let it soak into the joystick and everything. Um, one of the things that I like to do is before you even start hitting it with a rag or anything, I, I usually have like a, a bristle brush or something that you get into the areas and knock like the chunks of dirt off the same thing that sits heavy on there that might scratch things and all that. And then you can kind of start hitting it with a damp rag and everything. Uh, so, and of course, along with the joystick, um, the importance is of where electronics are, you have to, kind of notice where all your electronics are. On this chair, you of course have the joystick and then you have tilt mechanism that's pretty well covered. So you don't have to worry too much about this. And then your motors, and then you have a main brain that's down here in the shroud that's pretty well covered too. So these are pretty, pretty safe. You still don't want to get them too wet when you do it. Um, I'm and just then, I'm just kind of pointing out that there's there's some electrical connections there, so you just yeah. want to be mindful of moisture and electricity. Just don't play well together. Hey and, Joe, could you yeah. turn your uh, camera or your phone um, to landscape? You know, to, oh, sure. yeah, that would be great. Thank you. It's a we get a better view. There we go. Thank you. Sorry. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Um, and as far as motors, same thing. Just be careful on how, how wet you get them and everything. You can wipe down the motors and everything. Everything's pretty resistant 
when it comes to the motors and your bearings and, and all that. Um, tilt mechanisms, you gotta be careful with. Most of your tilt mechanisms run on a track system that's greased. So if you, the way I clean underneath the chairs is I always take it up an elevation or a tilt, kind of like what I'm doing right now. And that way you can get down in here and get in there and everything. You'll see right here, can you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. This, this is your track mechanism. What I like to tell people is don't use chemicals on this. If you use chemicals on cleaning this, um, you might want to get some, some, uh, some grease, some uh, petroleum grease or something, and you can re-grease these tracks a little bit uh, if you do. I mean, if it's really dirty and you really have to get in there, do that, but you want to throw a little bit of grease in there too. It's usually petroleum grease that you want to throw in there or uh, the red grease. It's a, like a berry, berry grease. grease. Yeah. And you just want to grease that up and make sure everything runs smooth and all that. But I, I usually get under here and keep everything clean too. <clears throat> and that, that'll help out with your tilt system and not having any kind of binding and all that kind of stuff too. Um, As far as footrests, I'm keeping them clean. We all know we get a little bit of buildup on the footrests. And sometimes these footrests, they have little crevices and stuff where this one doesn't in particular, but you have stuff like this. And that's where I just get a brush in there and, and keep that clean and everything. <clears throat> Let's see, what else do I got on clean? Okay. One of the things that I wrote down kind of last is uh, to advocate for yourself a little bit when you give a phone call. If you get a tilt error on your power chair, one of the things that I've been teaching people is to try and take a snapshot of what that code is so that you can remember and you can share it with, uh, with uh, a technician. One of the beautiful things that's happening in this industry is you are now, a lot of these chairs are making it available to where you can connect with your chair and you can share your chair's information now with a technician over the phone. So you can download whatever app comes with the chair, call a technician, and then you wind up getting a code. You guys share your information, and then we can look at your chair live. And then if I can't figure it out, I would call a technician for, from Quantum, and I can share that information with him, and he can help me figure it out also. So it's, it's gonna be a really useful tool to problem solve things. And um, I'm slowly figuring some of that stuff out. I just haven't uh, haven't faced it one on one all that much yet. But um, it's it's pretty new. Uh, I think Permobil does it now. Quantum does it. I'm not sure about where Quickie is. I imagine Quickie's there or close um, because they use our net electronics also, like Permobil. But uh, Know that, that the future is coming to where I don't have to necessarily go to your house to, to problem solve some things. So hopefully that'll all get figured out and we can do a lot of remote stuff and, and get things figured out a little bit faster. That way you don't have to wait for like a, an about time. You can just call, call me and hopefully we can figure it out real quick on the phone and get things ordered if we have to. So that's, so anytime you see a code or anything like that, um, yeah, just we'll, we'll try and get that, that live feed going and everything. Um, and then another thing, if anything breaks, uh, smartphones and devices are awesome now. Um, you can 
you can share with me. Like if you can't explain what the part is, you can take a picture of it from like a distance and up close on what the problem is. And that that's huge. And it, it kind of cuts down on time also so that I don't have to go out and, and, uh, and um, do an eval. Cause some of you know, some companies just out for an eval takes three weeks or so. Um, I don't think we take that long here. It, it's kind of nice. Um, and uh, what else do I need to talk about on that? Yeah, I think our lead time for scheduling is like five to 10 days, right? That's yeah. where we're sitting today. Yeah. And uh, so if you call in in need of service for your chair, we will generally within five days have somebody out to your home or to meet you at the clinic, wherever, yeah. um, doctor's office, we can get there and, and do the initial assessment. Or like Shannon said, the remote evaluation process is becoming more and more popular because initially that first trip is just trying to figure out what the problem is. And then typically we would have to order parts. Um, if there's documentation we might need to get it billed through insurance, you know, there are a couple extra steps. So if we can minimize one of those steps, We'd, we'd love to do it. So we'll try and save, uh, save one step and just at least be able to make that initial evaluation uh, remotely, get the parts on order. And then, you know, we are, we're taking it down from three trips to one at that point. If we can do it, we'll do it. And don't be afraid to say, I need you to come out and take a look at it. I mean, uh, that, that is what we're here for, but we are just trying to see if remote can speed the process up. It saves time for us to have in to go out to your place and do it uh, on everything. And the hope is to speed the process up. Um, when we do a remote eval, we're gonna ask you more than just the typical, like what's going on with the chair. I'm probably gonna ask you, you know, how long have you had your batteries? What's your tread life look like on your casters and your tires? Do you need arm uh, armrest you know, replaced, headrest replaced, how's your cushion, that kind of stuff. So we have a multiple point checklist that we always have to go through when we do evals and everything. So even on the remote evals, we're gonna try and do that and, and everything. So aware, awareness of your chair is pretty important for all that stuff too. So, um, yeah. Um, and then now I'm kind of at uh, toolkits. Um, it's always kind of nice to have your own set of tools specific to the chair for, you know, emergencies. Uh, or even just general maintenance. Or general maintenance. You know, you notice something is, a bolt is backing off somewhere or whatever, having some, some tools. So um, let's see. Having a set of L wrenches is really nice um, for, because this is really nice. I call it the Swiss Army Allen wrench set, but it's, it's small, compact, and it has quite a few different sizes. It's lighter than this, less bulky. You can put it in a backpack and, and everything, but it's not as easy as bulky when using it. So getting it into tight spaces and everything isn't as easy. We're having L wrenches. You can see you can get that into some tight spaces a lot easier. So maybe having like a set like this at your house is smart. And then having a set like this in your backpack for emergencies is a good idea. Um, let's see, small knee. Um, uh, have your vendor in your phone or on a business card or a, always have it on your person, just in case if you do get into that emergency and, and everything. One of the things that you will be told is if it's a real emergency, we do not have an emergency program. It's going to be you know, if it's a really bad situation to where you can't get help from family members or anything like that, you're going to have to call 911 probably and get the fire department 
involved in a, in, in a situation like that. Chairs are 400 pounds, 350 to 400 pounds. So um, it, it can be a little bit tricky when you're in an emergency. Um, and then just kind of some necessary tools in that tool pack, you know, from the Allen uh, key sets to maybe a small Phillips screwdriver and, and a flashlight or whatever you feel is important in that, that kit. Um, know your serial number. Uh, the serial number is pretty important so, so that um, we can maybe call the vendor right after. Because if I'm out on route and say my CSR calls me and say, says, hey, call this person and problem solve this, I can grab your serial number and then call the manufacturer while I'm out on the road at least because I won't have my computer to look it up. We have you in the system. We can find your serial number that way. But um, if, if you know your serial number, that, that can be really handy too and just kind of speed up the process of figuring things out too. So um, I don't really have much else. If you guys have some questions. So Elaine, do we want to take the power chair related questions now and before we jump into manual chairs? Uh, that, yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Let me, um, let me go through here. Um, let's see. Um, someone says, I charge my wheelchair uh, only when I get to orange and red. Is that okay? Um, it's from Harley. No. Raven. So, so this is my, my thing for battery maintenance. If you're using the chair every day of use, plug that thing in for at least eight to 10 hours. Um, it, it's, just, it's just really good for the life. Uh, it, batteries don't really have a, they say they don't have a memory anymore. So you don't have to do what the old saying was with cell phones and, and everything anymore to where um, they used to tell you to drain it and then charge it, drain it, and charge it. It's not that anymore. You you want to you want to you want to charge it every night of use, um, uh, if you're using it and everything. Um, another thing being said, if you have a power chair or a scooter that you do not use that much, um, and so like it's just for two weeks, three weeks at a time. Mark, mark on your calendar a week and a half later or so to make sure you charge that thing. So one of the things when it comes to the chargers, the way they, they work is they have to find eight volts or 18 volts of, of power to kick on your charger. If, if you don't have those volts, if you let your battery drop, your charger will not find it and kick the charger. Then you have to pull the batteries out and you have to trickle charge them as long as you haven't depleted the batteries so much to where they're dead. So that's okay. all important too. So if your chair just kind of sits uh, for a long period of time, you want to at least mark on your calendar a week and a half later or something, to make sure you plug it in overnight. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. And I think you had uh, mentioned the term heavy user. For your chair and so and Christina wants to know what you meant how do you define heavy user so somebody that does everyday life all day long in a wheelchair and and it is is just out and about going to the park just just scooting around some people Ian they, McKay Ian McKay's a yeah, heavy user. Ian, yeah Ian McKay is definitely a good example of a heavy <laughs> user um it, but there are those who just kind of stay in their house and only do a mile, a couple miles in their okay. chair. So that's kind of what I mean by a heavy user, somebody that's okay. out and other things yeah. and then some people are just in their house, just kind of okay. doing that. So. Yeah, some people use them like their cars. So yeah. I, uh, 
Um, and Rob looked up and it's $350 for one of the jacks that you, um, you demoed. So well, kind of expensive, <laughs> yeah. but they are nice. Yeah. Christina wants to know, did you say new tires every year? Uh, no new tires when the treads go out. Um, yeah. Okay. Batteries are one of those exceptions where, you, uh, they'll only cover them once a year unless if it's a faulty battery um you okay. should get that whole year out of a battery unless that they're crappy batteries um, yeah. some people have cheap batteries and they only last them six months um uh but the batteries that we sell they should last you at least a year the mks okay. yeah yeah i i do That's another I, thing we use mks so yeah i do i did want to plug that that we, at NSM, we use the MK battery, which for most of you, you probably know this MK is a household name when it comes to power chair batteries. And that's really, they're, they're the only manufacturer that I know of that's specifically designed for power chair use. Um, there are other, you know, Interwest, there are other batteries out there, but those are more like marine grade batteries or for other recreational applications and not necessarily designed with the power chair user in mind. So oh, our okay. chairs go out the door with MK batteries in them. Great, thank you. That's really good to know. Uh, Kenny wants to know, um, or let me see. No, I'm sorry. Rob wants to know: Is it okay to use canned air to clean your chair? Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. And, and an air, I think, is fine too. Uh, I just be <clears> careful <throat> if you see like crevices that might knock the dirt into like the motor. Or anything be careful i i just say when you're using high pressure anything like that you, you just got to use caution yeah it's okay. like i look at it like a computer so i'm trying to pull the plug out but you'll there's mono jack ports and things that that create an opening on the the joystick and obviously you don't want to spray canned air in there yeah. okay some uh christina asks what is quantum app um so they they now have um let me get my phone. They now have apps for Permobil and Quantum that you can monitor. You can yourself monitor um, the usage of your battery, how, how you're charging the battery and everything. And that's one of the things that we would look at is like, if you're having battery problems, we can look at how the how you're charging the battery. And we can see if you're only charging it for a couple hours versus the eight to 10 hours that you need and everything. But you could, we can also diagnose with the app on the phone. So um, the what I use for a technician is Econ, um, uh, I for the iPhone, but you can, all, you can download uh, an Econ app trying to remember the name of the app that you can use yourself and you can um, pay attention to your chair also. You can wow. actually, yeah, you can look at some of the things. It won't give you quite <clears throat> the techie view that I can see, but you can, you can see other things and you can do silly things. Like if you have the enhanced display, you can add pictures to your, to your display and, and stuff like that. So if you're pretty techie, tech savvy and everything it's it's kind of a cool app that you can you can do and and so most of your chairs now have bluetooth capability and that being said you can communicate with your chair over wow. the year yeah over the years they had battles because they were worried about um uh, phi and all that kind of stuff if it could leak out and, yeah. and everything but they've they've got the logistics of that stuff figured out so okay. now lifetime look at your your chair so if you get the let me try and can't remember exactly the name of the app that well you can let us know too yeah um and steve wants to know how many chair chairs use metric as opposed to english allen wrenches that's a good question know? most of your chairs are metric anymore okay M Chair is a lot more standard. So if you're you have an Invocator power chair, um, it, it it has a lot of uh, standard on it. Um, Quantum, 
Permobil and uh, Quickie are mostly metrics. Sometimes they mix standard in there. It's a little frustrating because then you think you got all the tools and you got to go grab standard. But, um, but uh, all across the board, most of our metric. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, Kenny mentioned that serial numbers can be uh, usually found on the chassis of your chair with a barcode somewhere. <coughs> so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, serial numbers can be kind of tricky because um, no, I haven't found a vendor that puts them. At, Name of Care actually puts them in a better location than most of them. Um, one of the things that I do is quantum comes with a sticker that I just kind of stick so that you guys can see. It's right on the base, easy to see. Otherwise, if, if you don't have that, this is why it's important to kind of have it on your phone or, or in, in your wallet or, or some, somewhere where it's handy. So when you first get the chair or sometime, or you can call us and we can at least have you this is it. So to get to the serial number on a lot of things, you have to take shrouds off. Like Shannon was saying, Kenny's um, Kenny's accustomed to the Invicare product. So he's got, oh. he's got his serial number. What it's on the front rocker arm on the inside mm -hmm. of the front rocker arm. So yeah. it's, there's no shroud removal to get to it. That's why Shannon with quantum, they put it underneath of this shroud, but it comes with a sticker to place it somewhere um, more readily available. So yeah. Shannon puts them up here on the on the top of the seating or so the in, base. Now you're kind of seeing a struggle that I'm facing right now. This seating system is a, at its lowest point. So in order for me to even get this shroud off, I'm gonna have to take the, cause it has to slide up uh, about that much. And uh, then the shroud just comes out out the back but i can't slip because this tilt system is is down so low the shroud is running into the tilt system so i would have to take the tilt system off a little bit to even get the shroud off right now which uh, was kind of a bummer i was going to show you guys where where it might look located down on the frame down here if you can get the shroud off so that that's one of the reasons why i try and tell people to have their serial number on person because it's not easy to find unless if a technician comes out. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. We did have one more question, but I think we're going to have to to switch to um, to Marty now for yeah. us uh, to hear about manual chairs. And then at the end, um, if you guys don't mind, we'll ask. Uh, maybe you can answer a few more questions. No problem. Yep. Sounds good. All right. And now here's the famous Marty Whitman, who's worked on my chair several times and uh, found some really gross stuff when he's cleaned out my caster wheels. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't want to talk about that. So, yeah. all right. Take it away, Marty. So, Elaine, uh, are you giving me, are you, are you cutting Shannon out because you know I'm full of hot air and I need more time? <laughs> yeah, we'll cut you off. We'll give you the good, get, get, you'll get the hook. Uh, okay. Okay. So here's the deal. We've got uh, manual chairs we're going to be working on here or talking about. So I've just made a list of some things that to keep me kind of on track or off track. Um, now you're going to hear some overlap. And the overlap from Shannon and I, if we both said it, is probably pretty important. Serial number, serial number, serial number. Make sure you take a picture of it, you write it down, you put it somewhere. You know, tattoos are pretty uh, pretty popular these, these days. Get a tattoo. <laughs> and, and we ask you what it is, just say it's your DOC number, Department <laughs> of Corrections. So, but get that serial number down because everybody asks for it. And you don't want to be caught with your pants down. You need your serial number. All right. Uh, tools. Shannon talked a lot about tools. Every... Um, Every manufacturer obviously has their, their own tools that they use. Sometimes they actually send the tools or include the tools with the chair. Now, uh, over here, uh, this manufacturer, who I happen to know, I'm not advertising or anything, um, they make a nice little kit. 
And one time I had a guy that was looking at the chair. He said, I don't know if I'm going to get your chair, but can I get that kit? So uh, that was pretty cool. And in that kit is, we were talking about Allen wrenches before. This um, is a metric or chair that has metric. There's a three millimeter, four millimeter, five millimeter. And they also include some other wrenches inside this kit as well. So that's, uh, you know, do what you got to do. Uh, make your own kit up. You know, if, if uh, you know, Shannon showed you the L, oh. Allen keys, you know, if you could buy a kit, but if you only need three wrenches, just take three wrenches out and put it in your own little kit for your own chair. Or again, if the manufacturer includes it, better yet. Okay, but know your tools. Have your tools ready. Um, wheels and casters. We're going to start out uh, talking a lot about wheels and casters. Why? Because you know what? If you have a wheel problem, you don't go anywhere. If you have a screw that's loose on your back or your seat upholstery or anywhere else on your chair, you'll probably be okay for a period of time. But if you don't have a wheel, you're not in good shape. So wheels, wheels and casters. And then it, with the wheels and casters are bearings, obviously. So let me, let me stop right here and focus on wheels, uh, specifically changing a tire. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. Uh, I saw somebody at one time demonstrating how to do a tire or how to change a tire and it was brutally boring. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks that I use that kind of help, especially for somebody who has limited hand function or compromised hand function. So I have to be a little bit more strategic uh, in changing a tire because, uh, again, I don't have as much hand function. Um, but there's some things that I do. So uh, this wheel right now, this tire, I let all the air out. And if you get a flat tire, the air is probably going to be out. So you want to get all the air out that you can. And what I like to do before I even take the tire off or attempt to take the tire off is um, massage. I think I put massage down here somewhere. Yeah, right in here. Massage. I massage. Oh, yeah. Why don't you flip it all the way? Yeah, yeah. There we go. I massage the tire. So what I mean by massage is I, I take the tire away from the rim. And that little, that little connection right there with the tire and the rim is called a clinch. So I undo the clinch, if you will. So I go all the way around the tire, both sides. I loosen it up and I get it away from the rim. Then I have an easier time of getting my tire tool in. I don't know, Joe, I'm going to do it from my side if you want to come behind me. So I get the tire tube or the tire tool, if you will, in there. This is a really cool little tire tool called a Pedro, P-E-D-R-O-S, or Pedro's. Uh, I find it to be a good one. Um, yeah, my, I do different things depending on where I am and what I'm doing, but, um, you've probably seen this before. So, so I get, I detach, Ooh, I grab both sides there. So I detach it in this, wrap it around and, uh, take the tire off or the take, yeah, take the tire off. And then I get to the tube. Now, some things I want to bring to your attention. When I do get the tire off, hey, Wendell, won't you puke? No, I got it. Forget it. I got it. It's the easy one here. This is nice. And by the way, I'm always dropping crap. So I always get mad at myself when I do stuff like this. So we've got the tube, obviously, inside the tire. And you've got to replace it now um, or patch it. It's up to you. I like to just replace them. Sometimes I patch them if I feel cheap. So we get the, tire, uh, the tube out of there. But I always like to investigate. Why in the heck did I get a flat tire? Was it something I ran over? Was it something within the tire uh, on the rim uh, that caused the problem? What's what's going on? I, I like to investigate because like, what happens is if you if if you get a flat and it's maybe you've got maybe something poking out inside the tire, you're just going to get another flat again. Then you got some problems. So. There's one thing that is, can you pan in on this there, Joe, this little red piece? That's called a rim strip. That doesn't get a whole lot of attention, but it is a really important part of the, um, the whole process because it protects the spoke nipples on the other side from the tube. It's a barrier. 
and you really need a good rim strip and make sure that like a spoke isn't poking out from the other side uh, through the nipple. All right. So rim strip is really important. Uh, uh, I like to get cloth ones. It's like a cloth tape and I like them really narrow. I like to fit them right inside the channel so that they don't interfere with the, with me putting on the tire. All right. So if you get a rim strip that's up on the, up on the ridge here, that complicates matters. So anyhow, rim strip underrated, but, but it's a good thing. Um, so at any rate, uh, um, baby powder, baby powder is a good thing. It's good, a good, um, it's a good, uh, product to have feel, feel this, uh, tire there, Joe, pretty sticky, isn't it? Yep. So that can cause some problems when you're putting your tire back. You know, you got to be really, really careful so you don't pinch things. And that baby powder, putting that baby powder around that tube will really uh, help um, maybe alleviate some of that, that grabbing and pinching that goes on uh, when you got the tube inside the tire and you're trying to put it back on. All right. So um, baby powder is a good thing. I already talked about, oh, the tire tools. Uh, that's this. They're usually come in twos and uh, they're very handy. Again, these are called Pedros. Um, they work well. I talked about rim strips. Hey, let's talk about tube versus a solid core for a moment or solid tires. So a tube is obviously what I've been uh, working with uh, here, and that's just your tube. Now, a solid core, imagine if you will, this, but completely solid. And those of you who don't like to deal with flat tires, um, you probably have a solid core, which goes inside and replaces the inner tube. Um, they're okay if you if maintenance is an issue for you or if you are in an environment like I have a friend who uh, is a welder and he's in a shop. He's got burrs all over the floor. So we'd like a more solid tire. It works better for him. Um, but uh, um, they're a pain in the rear to put on. And I recommend going right to Shannon for this bad boy. <laughs> I, 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 I personally, I want to attempt it. Uh, that's a solid core, that is. They're not easy. You no, know, they're not easy. Uh, can one of you young fellows go get that solid tire right over there under that bench? So, and the third type of a tire is a solid tire period, all in one. If you hear the term semi-pneumatic, we're talking about a tire and a solid core. If this were solid, that's semi-pneumatic. Um, pneumatic obviously is a tire that has air. The third option is a solid tire and that stretches oh that's a tire and everything all in one solid you can see there's tread on there and that stretches over the wheel itself again it's a good option for people um i love air so i uh i, I like the ride uh, it's weight the rolling resistance uh very good so i like air and i just put up with the flats now and again um i would say that i have to pump up my tires maybe once every two months because they get a little low. Um, you'll know they're low when your wheel locks aren't working as well and you're not pushing as well. Um, so that's uh, that's the deal with the tire. I, again, I don't want to spend too much uh, time on the tire. What kind again, of tires do you use? I use Schwalbe Marathon Plus. And uh, Shannon, if you go over there um, and grab that pair I pulled. Uh, <clears throat> tires have really evolved over the years and wheelchair tires have gotten really good. They really have. And I don't mean to plug Schwalbe necessarily, but they come up with a really good tire. A lot of us use them. Uh, it's called a, a Marathon Plus. Again, it's made by Schwalbe. I live inside of Canada. And, um, and what I like about Sh uh, Schwalbe is, number one, it's very high pressure. And number two, the wall, the wall of the tire, this area right here is very sturdy so that when you get a flat you don't feel like you've got a flat and you're not ruining your rim if you've got to get still get from point a to point b so and it's not as hard to roll on um it it, it holds up pretty good until you can get to a place to patch it or to fix it okay um this is your standard yeah they're hard to puncture they're puncture resistant and the black don't worry about the black uh it will not make marks all right, it's designed not to make marks. All right, this is your standard, um, and that's a 24 by one. That one is uh, one is the width, 
This is a 24 by one and three eighths. So it's a little bit, a little bit wider. The diameter is the same, but it's a little bit wider. So, and, and um, um, that one is high pressure. Being high pressure, it's gonna be a lot harder to get on. So there's some give and take, you get high pressure, but it's gonna be hard to get on and off of the rim. This is, uh, again, your standard tire, easy. You saw me get it right off, piece of cake. If I was working with one of those, it would take a little bit more time, a little bit more energy to uh, work with a Schwalbe. But nonetheless, uh, we have a lot of choices out there, and uh, uh, that's the deal with the tires. Again, massaging, I can't overestimate it. When you get the tire uh, on and you go through the steps of getting it over the rim, and the final step of getting it on the rim, just always look for where the tube might have been poking out. Maybe it's uh, caught. Just check, and look, and massage, and really, really uh, take your time. Uh, it can avoid another another flat before you can get on your chair. And boy, I made, made those mistakes. Not good. All right, Shannon, you too? Have you made those mistakes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's loud sometimes, too, when you don't get the inner tube in. Yeah, yeah, mm. no. bad deal. So take your time, massage it. Uh, what was something else about, I wanted to say, oh, um, tire, if you could go up there, Joe, where it says tire size. <laughs> tire size for manual chairs. So the wheelchair industry and the bicycle industry, um, obviously we both use wheels, but some of the uh, language is, and tire size can be a little bit uh, different so we go by 24 by 1 or 25 by 1 or 1 and 3 eighths and 26 that's the wheelchair industry now you'll see a number there a tire size for example 20-540 that's the european size for a 24 by 1 so that's a good number to know if you have 24 inch wheels because if you go to a bike shop, which I highly recommend going to bike shops uh, these days uh, to get stuff fixed, um, uh, that is a common number. 540 is the metric for 24. And that's something that's not, that we can't dispute. But sometimes the bicycle industry will call R25 a 26. And so it gets kind of confusing. So 20 is the width, 540 is the diameter know that if you have a 25 inch wheel it's 20-559 and uh 26 is uh 20-590 or it could be a 25 25 dash so just just know that uh it makes um life a little bit easier sometimes you can really know your chairs so you can tell people what you need all right so that's all i want to talk about uh and if you have any questions do ask them about uh, the rear wheels. Um, Can I, uh, a couple of people are asking questions. Yeah. Um, how can I tell if it's bent? Christina wants to know. Oh, I sure. Miss, I guess her rim, I, I'm guessing. Sure. There's, there's when, when somebody's building a wheel, they need to make sure that there's two um, parts of the wheel that are perfect. The round, the, the, like coming from the side, so it's perfectly round, and then looking at it from the other way, looking at it from this way, making sure it's perfectly straight, right? So if you want to be able to know if your wheel is straight or not, it's probably gonna be on your chair, but if you have a chance to get out of your chair, you can take a wheel out and you can just spin it. And you can look and see, this looks like a pretty, good wheel is pretty straight or you can just um roll down um roll down the hallway or whatever it might be and have somebody kind of look or you can look down yourself and kind of see if it's wobbly if it's wobbly then that's not good you got a bent wheel yeah i don't know if i answered the question or not but um no that's great oh like christina was asking about her power chair it's an on oh oh she's talking talking with rob i guess about it so um so i guess it wasn't a question it was a comment to rob so sorry about that 
That's all right. You have another question, Elaine? Um, let's see. Uh, Steve says my axles sometimes tend to move out, uh, destabilizing the wheels. How do I prevent this? So, uh, uh, give me some more information here. What, what's the what's the concern? Uh, Rob, is there any chance you could unmute Steve Lewis so he could uh, ask the question and give more information? Steve, Rob will give unmute you, and you just have to click. Okay. When he sends you um, a message. Sometimes. Hi, Steve. Uh, sometimes when I put my axle in, it doesn't it doesn't seem to solidly click. And as I yep. roll around, it tends to move out maybe a uh, half inch or so, yeah, which is quick. not always a good thing. Yep. Right yeah. So a couple things may, may be wrong. So whatever the case, these ball bearings, see these little ball bearings right here, when you push that button in on the other end, it releases the ball bearings. So the ball bearings aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Either they're stuck, they're bound up somehow or the axle doesn't go all the way through the sleeve and doesn't release uh, through the sleeve. So, so what I mean by that is, let me put this axle back through the wheel. Okay, so, so it, should be like, it should be like this. You should not be able to pull it out, right? So what you need to do then is elongate your axle and if that's the case, most of the time that's the case. You just need to make your axle a little bit longer. And the way that you can do that is, there's this little uh, washer here. I'm sure. so, trying to get the washer out of the way. But <clears throat> your uh, axle has a little uh, nut here. It's a three quarter inch wrench it takes right here. It's nut. Okay, and there's some um, threads there. So if you undo or back off that nut towards the the button head here, you're going to, in essence, elongate the length of that axle. So that should give you a little bit more room to um, for this axle for the ball bearings to pop out on the on the housing on on the other end, on the other side, right? The receiver, right? So you can work with this nut here. It, you can actually shorten or lengthen your axle with this nut. Now there's only a certain amount of threads, but it, sometimes it doesn't take much to get what you need. It's, uh, I mean, the amount of threads on there is probably a good half inch mm -hmm. worth of travel that you can adjust on that axle. And, and there's, if you look here, there's some flat spots. There's a flat spot here, flat spot here. And that's where you put the wrench on the other end so that you can actually move it, if that makes sense. you got to have... You've got to stop it. You got to stop it somehow so that you can move. Because this is a uh, this nut here is nylock. It's a little challenging to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. Most likely, Thanks. it's your axle is a little too sh uh, long, uh, short. Thanks, Marty. Yep. Okay. Any questions? Um. Let's see. Oh, Erica says she has solid tires and she gets them changed at the bike shop. Well, the bike shop does it for you. Yeah. I, I bet you they're cussing at you when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention that um, I have uh, foam inserts in my uh, tires that so it prevents me from getting flats because as a single person, flats are just nightmares. And I seem to attract um, anything sharp. So um, yeah, to, anything sharp will puncture my tires. So I went with foam inserts and they really have helped me a lot. But then again, I do have power assist wheels. So I don't need, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter as much for my chair. So, yeah, you know, um, Elaine, you've had those for a long time, right? I have. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually not foam, it's a solid rubber. It's like this inner tube, but it's just solid rubber. Okay. I don't think it's foam, is it? I I was told it was foam inserts, but I don't know, maybe not. Uh, it is, it, it's a foamish rubber, it's hard. Uh, yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yep. Very good. Okay. Is that my phone doing that? I think that was somebody on there. Oh, I thought I was running out of battery. <laughs> I was going to get nervous. Let me just, let me for a moment uh, talk about bearings in and of themselves. All right. Um, because they're incorporated in three different spots of your chair. They are in the rear wheel, right? The rear wheel has, or the hub, this is the hub, the center. It has bearings on each side. And those bearings are pretty darn standard. You can get those online. Um, God, I don't know this. The inside diameter I know is a half an inch because your axle is most likely a half an inch, but I don't know what the outside diameter is, but they're pretty standard. Um, most of the time they're sealed uh, either with um, um, a little metal sealed cap or a rubber cap. Um, so that's one part of where you're going to find a bearing on a wheelchair. The other part is obviously the caster. Let's pan on over to this uh, manual chair over here on the bench. So right down here is a uh, um, caster and it has bearings in here uh, inside the hub as well. But, and they're, they're like skateboard. They're pretty much skateboard uh, size bearings. Um, so those are another bearing. And the third bearing that you don't always see and you don't know about, but you have to have them, is right inside what we call, this area is called what's uh, uh, a caster housing or a caster journal or a caster barrel. It's all the same thing. This area right here, this mechanism of the chair. Um, back in the day, the bearings, um, they used to have the barrel welded here and there'd be a bearing on top and a bearing underneath. but Wheelchair manufacturers these days get really fancy. Actually, the bearings for this chair are actually in the fork. So, um, but this is the third place where you're gonna find bearings. First place is the wheel, back wheel, rear wheel. Second place is the caster. Third place is the um, caster housing, caster journal, caster barrel, all right? So um, while we're here, so that any questions about bearings? Steve says, is, is there an advantage to ceramic bearings? That's a great question. Great question. I do not know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard um, uh, one guy that swore up and down to her skateboard bearings. Sk yeah. Skateboard? You just have to know your diameters. Yeah. You know, uh, in the bearing industry, they classify bearings as to their quality. And there is a rating system they use. I don't have it off the top of my head. You could probably look it up if you care to. Um, but the, 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 they have ratings for you know, like good, better, best type thing. So, and you could look that up and research it. Ceramic bearings, I have no, no idea. Good, good question, Steve. So um, let's, let's, while we're here, it's a good uh, segue into the caster. Now this this um, chair here is prime time for hair. We've got a good setup for hair. So hair is one of those things. <laughs> Elaine, do you mind if I pick on you a little bit? Please, please. All right. So uh, <laughs> I worked on Elaine's chair a few times, and I I was absolutely shocked to find out how hard uh, hair can be. It, hair can actually over time wear metal, wear out metal. They can form grooves in the bearing, in the in the fork. It is, I cannot believe how tough hair is. So this is a, a problem. Uh, obviously, it's a maintenance area that you want to take care of over time. And I, I, I'm probably in violation right now myself on my own chair. But um, you're going to want to always check your spin on your caster. Uh, if you don't have good spin, a couple things are, are maybe going wrong. Either your bearings are bad or you've got a lot of hair. And I know there's a variety of strategies to get the hair out of there. I've heard of people burning it. Um, but bottom line, the old fashioned best way to do it is take the doggone caster out. You got a screw over here. You got a screw over here, one on each side of the fork. 
you take it apart. Uh, maybe we got to do that. Shannon, you want to do that really quick? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. So I also learned a little, little trick if you're putting oh, yeah. the drill. All right. You can also try this trick right here. Grab a drill bit that'll fit in between there. And you can just don't, don't of course drill it, but you can lay the drill on top of the hair and slowly just kind of pick up. You kind of see the hair now. That That's one way if you don't want to take it apart. But I will say this, hair finds its way in the bearings pretty good. Let me grab some on that just real quick. Yeah, you know, I, I I, I, that's a great strategy, but I must tell you that it doesn't get everything. Maybe in a pinch, if you've got a lot of hair and you just need to get some out because maybe you're, it's slowing you down a little bit, um, that might work. But when you have the time, uh, sit down, either have somebody do it for you or you do it, uh, get, just take it apart um, and get, get it all out of there. <clears throat> um, so that, I know there's a lot of, that's always a question. So, it's one of those things we we don't like to have to deal with but uh you just gotta right so check out that t handle that's another option for a yeah. a um type of a allen wrench it's called a t handle they work really well too if you have the room so he's going to take it apart and I, and uh, um God, what was i going to say i one thing is that in terms of bearings I was kind of um, rudely surprised when I got my tie light. I have a single sided fork and the, the inside diameter is a slightly larger for my fork uh, than the standard fork. But most forks are the skateboard, uh, the skateboard size, if you will. But if you have a single sided fork, it might be different. All right. So that's the axle. Both sides of the axle are threaded, and you generally have a screw. Sometimes it's Phillips. Most of the times it's a number three Allen wrench. And so you just. Let's stop for one moment. Joe, pan over to my shirt right here. Watch where I'm going to get out. It's magic trick. Whoa. Hey, you see that? <laughs> that is called Loctite or thread lock. All right. This is really good stuff to have really good stuff to have now um what we use it for is these screws can you see the screw so there's a little bit what this manufacturer did tie light they put a little bit of thread lock can you see that uh it's like a yellowish color mine has, happens to be blue and there's different um different uh strengths, strengths if you will yeah Mine's a medium strength, it's blue. So what, what that means is it'll keep your screw in and it won't come out, but if you have to take it out, it won't be really hard to get out. Red is a, is a high strength and red um, can be really challenging to get out if you need to take it out. But it's really good stuff. And if you're having a problem with screws coming out, this is the stuff to use. Or if you wanna be super duper proactive, when you get your new chair, and you don't and you have a lot of time on your hands, take all the screws out of your chair and put some of this Loctite on it. That, 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 would, that would prevent any future problems, just about guaranteed, right? And if you want to be nice to yourself and your technician, only use blue, don't go for red, because right. it'll strip <laughs> out your bolts and, and everything. It, it's not fun. Um, so we've, we've got the axle out and everything. Most of your casters have some kind of a spacer. Tie light's nice because they actually have oh, yeah. a machined spacer. So you'll see, I mean, I've gotten a lot more hair than that out of casters before, but that's a little bit of what happens. You wind up with some curly hair. We're gonna do a DNA test. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Donated to Locks of Love for some, some really curly hair. Uh, so the spacer you can see how tightly wound the hair can get i mean it is a challenge to get it off of that spacer but once you kind of remove that the other thing that i like to do is see if there's any hair that's starting to make its way into the bearing yeah because that that will kill your bearing real fast so i kind of pull at this hair you see how i don't know if you guys can see how i'm getting some hair out of that bearing. check that out yeah that's what i'm talking about just take it apart get it all out of there that's why this is much more important than just throwing a drill at it or burning it. 
Plus, if you burn it, you might catch the plastic on fire and some grease. So, yeah. <clears throat> so there you go. And you're probably going to ask, well, what type of uh, lubricant should I use? Well, um, I would, I, I don't use a lot. What I might do is take some WD-40 as a cleaning device um, or some silicone spray and, and use it to clean. Um, but I don't keep it on there. I, because what it does is it, it attracts it attracts dirt and grime. Um, so you don't want to use a lot of it. Just keep it clean. Yeah, one nice thing about the bearings that they use is they're sealed. So you don't have to pack bearings anymore. If the bearings go bad, you replace them. They're fairly cheap. They're made in China and everything. So they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty cheap. Um, and then uh, one of the other things, so one nice thing about the tie light is they're machined. So these spacers, you don't have to juggle them as much. They actually insert right into the bearing like this. And then you can put them on with pretty, it's pretty easy that way. Other chairs don't machine these spacers and you have to do a lot of juggling. So you have to figure out a, a method of holding on to those spacers and then holding it where you need it on the fork and then sliding your axle in. Now, another trick too is, um, on the inside of each bearing, they always put another spacer in there so that the bearings don't collapse into each other and everything. So you can kind of see I'm going in there, but now I'm hitting something. That's because that spacer is out of place. And you can look inside here, like a Allen wrench or something in there, and you can kind of push that spacer where it needs to be. And now you can see my axle is going all the way through and then kind of coming out the, the back side right there. And then you just kind of use both your Allen wrenches, use your Loctite, blue Loctite preferred, and just kind of cinch, cinch things down. Uh, thank you. Erica has a question. My casters have plastic spacers and I don't know what to do when they break. So I leave the hair in my wheels. Okay, hold on a second. What kind of chair is it? Um, er Rob, do you mind unmuting Erica and she can talk to them? And um, you guys are going till 745. It's 743 right now. Uh oh, man, there's something to cover. No, that's okay. My time is just right. The good yeah. Sam people had to leave, unfortunately. <laughs> Debbie said goodbye to everyone. Uh, Eric, are you there? You'll get a pop up message on muting to unmute yourself, Erica. Harley Draven says, She's going to have her husband look at my casters this weekend. I'm afraid to know how much hair is in there. I have a German shepherd, but no carpet. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Christina says goodbye. Oh, no. All right. Um, oh, okay. I'm uh, trying I, to see if Erica is still on the call. Yeah, okay, she's still well, on the call. Rob, if you could unmute her, that would be great. What were you going to say, Marty? Yeah, a couple quick things. Going back to the tools for a moment, I forgot that um, many, many of us these days have aftermarket backs. And so you, uh, uh, you're you going to want to make sure you have the tools for that back as well, because they might have uh, separate tools than the chair. Okay, great. While, while we're on the upholstery, here's just a little thing you might want to know. Um, when you're getting a brand new chair, and you get an aftermarket solid back, I recommend that you ask for the back upholstery that comes standard with the chair because it's no cost. Just ask the, um, the, the provider if they can also include the uh, standard upholstery because if the back goes bad, then you have a backup, a backup um, back you can put on it until you get your solid back fixed. Okay, great, thank you. I, I can't tell you how important it is to be 
proactive, have an extra tube and tire available so that when you do get that flat, you don't have to scramble to find a tire. Um, and that, that goes for anything. Uh, if, if you just got hurt and it's your first chair, when you get your second chair, keep your first chair so that you have a backup. Yeah, I so, definitely do that. Yes. Uh, Steve wants to know, is there's any way to replace the upholstery on the back? Do you know, absolutely. Marty? Yeah, absolutely. You mean just regular standard back upholstery? Yeah, yes. That's um, easy. Okay. Number one, you need your serial and manufacturer and your serial number. And then that's that's kind of like your serial numbers, your DNA, so they know what back upholstery you need. Okay. I didn't is realize it, how important that serial number is, so that's good to know. Is, it is so handy to have. And in yeah. fact, it, and in fact, on a tie light, uh, a tie light, uh, boy, it, 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 yeah, it's usually right between the seat upholstery and that cross member it's on the back okay. side and okay. they put it in an inconspicuous spot so you so it can't be damaged it's on this okay. on the, this cross member and if it starts with an m the new tie lights are have a serial number starting with an m and that means metric so they're all of their um nuts and bolts are metric okay that's great information it's just uh way more than i i ever knew about it and I've been in a chair since 1982. So a lot of things have changed over the years, that's for sure. Yeah, so we did not cover wheel locks. I mean, that's another thing. We didn't cover a lot of uh, ancillary um, parts to the chair, but the I wanna refer to what Elaine said. Uh, she said she's including um, that document for wheelchair repair. I went I read through that. It's, it's very, very detailed It's several pages, but it's good to know. It's good to know. I think it's a, a good resource uh, to know. They cover a lot of stuff uh, in that document. Well, great. Um, Arlie Draven said, I'm the president of the Northwest SCI Network. Thank you everyone for such an informative meeting for us. I've learned a lot. Becky said, when you start accumulating chairs, it's a great idea to name them. <laughs> so, <laughs> minus Miss Wheelie. So, but that's also my pseudonym. I probably shouldn't say that out loud. <laughs> so, um, any other questions? I know that we got to get rolling here, but any, uh, any questions? I, um, Harley Draven said her chair is uh, called the tank. So <laughs> yeah. Any other questions from anyone that you want to ask, please put them in the chat. That would be great. And this can be about power or manual chairs. I don't have a question, but I just wanted to make a comment, Marty, that um, yes, I really appreciated that little uh, presentation on the caster part because that just happened to me over the weekend. In fact, I still have an issue with it for my costume. I was going to be wearing red um, hair extensions. They were like 24 inches long. And one fell on the floor and I didn't know it. And it wrapped up into my caster oh, no. and it's still in there. And my chair just, I was home by myself and I was able to cut most of it out, but a lot of it is still in there. So I just got a lesson on how to take that apart because it's definitely still an issue for me. So thank you for um, that part of it because I really need to do that. I, going back to the bearings for a moment in those casters and even in the, the hubs of the wheels, they're many times they're kind of pressed in there pretty good. So they're kind of can be a challenge getting the bearings out. And so you, if you don't have the means to do that, you might want to take it to uh, either, you know, National Seat of Mobility or a bike shop or somebody who has the tools to get that bearing out to put new ones in. Okay. That's just Thank a, you. a thought. Um, that's a nightmare scenario, Melissa. One time, uh, it was the, the night before I was going to start a new job and I ran over a pair of underwear and all of a sudden my chair came to a dead stop. It's, I was up till about 1230, you know, that night trying to cut underwear out of my, um, my tire. So I had to show up at my new job the next day 
trying to do a wheelie into the office with his bright pink underwear wrapped around my oh. caster and tell my new boss. So oh, no. and got a box cutter. You she, the best. So much. she and the admin <laughs> assistant spent over an hour cutting my underwear out of my front caster wheel. So, and then the next day I had a box on my desk from Nordstrom and it was a thong underwear and it said, this will be less to cut out next time. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my initiation into my new job. That's so, good stuff. Yeah, I did. Jeez. So, um, yeah. Did I already say um, like Steve's question of will the spacers for a tie light caster work for a third party caster wheel? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, well, well, oh, a third party? You mean like a frog leg wheel? A, ca a frog leg caster? No. He's oh, go muted. ahead, Steve. Um, so, you know, I buy some caster, you know, a five inch caster, which isn't a tie light caster. Right. Um, DME hub or something like that. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Will they work? Okay, yep. great. Yes, they should. As long as the width of the hub is the same, which typically they are, uh, frog leg makes a really good. Um, aftermarket caster you know, yeah, I like tie light but they're a little expensive but I, I tell you the frog leg is a good quality uh, aftermarket cast uh, company that makes uh, casters and forks and um, yes typically they'll follow the width of uh, the manufacturer and these are pretty standard width um, uh, casters so the answer is yes thank oh, you good okay oh yes Oh, thank you for the reminder. Um, there's something new on the market we've talked about before. I've talked to some of you about it. It's called a frog shield. Frog leg has come up with a product. It's a little rubber piece, a, a boot, if you will, that goes uh, over the spacer. And I think it covers part of the bearing. And it, the idea is to uh, eliminate some of the problems with hair. It's called a frog shield. Oh, wow. And I haven't got one yet or got them yet, but I do plan on trying them. Uh, I'm going to, I've got to get new casters and forks for my chair. So I'm going to get the frog, frog shields as well. So yeah, uh, just, an, just a little trick that's new on the market that you might want to check out. Cool. That's Thanks good to know. Jenny. Is this only for those specific type of casters though? No. Okay, cool. Yep, I think it'll work on yours, Elaine. Would you be up for another uh, uh, <laughs> hair removal Absolutely. session sometime About there, Marty? Time. Yeah, We're Marty coming. and I live down the street from each other. So, um, yeah, <laughs> he's come to my rescue more than once. <laughs> so, yeah, good. Um, we have any other questions? We're going to be... Um, having a quick um, giveaway that Kenny is going to be doing and uh, then he'll be wrapping things up. So Marcia said, thanks for all info. I look forward to working with you at uh, National Seating and Mobility. Um, mm -hmm. Becky's trying to figure out what to name her new chair because the other ones are called Bob and Fred. <laughs> so I suggested Howard. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Any other questions from anyone? Well, Kenny, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, wrap everything up? And then if I see any other questions, I'll uh, let you guys know, okay? Perfect. Well, yeah, thank you, Elaine, for uh, managing all the questions. I really want to thank uh, Joe Schumacher and Shannon from National Seating Mobility, as well as our very own Marty Whitman. Uh, you guys are uh, Tremendous assets to the community, and we really support, appreciate your guys' support.